everyone. My name is Pam Nakpil, and this is The Moving Truth with Pam. So for today, I am very happy because I have really good friends with me today at the show. So I will not introduce them, so I will let them introduce themselves. So please, ladies first. Ladies first. Ladies first. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Anime Sai. I go by May. I'm Brian Sai. Her husband. <laughs> I can see the dynamics already with just the introductions. Okay, so so May and Brian are also from the Philippines, where I'm from. So let's go through the thinking process of why Philippines, Canada. So who initiated it? What was the reasoning behind moving? Well, um, it has been a long-term goal for us as a couple to okay. um, live abroad. For I think the main reason that a lot of immigrants have is for a better life. Mm -hmm. We've been planning it since we were newly married. We've been checking on um, a lot of countries, Australia, New Zealand, um, and then Canada. And then we were like, whatever country would welcome us, we will go. Okay. It was just as basic as that. So what happened to Australia, New Zealand, Brian? What, what happened to those plans going there? So we tried. Uh, uh, at first, because my brother is in okay. Australia, so we tried like to have the family together. Why not try Australia so we can have like one whole family mm -hmm. made, mm -hmm. might bring our parents. So we tried applying there, but unfortunately, it wasn't for us. Okay, I, well, we I got know. denied. We got denied. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Even with a brother there. Yep. Yes. Okay, so you know, there's the states, there's New Zealand, you know, and near the Philippines. In fact, that's one of the things yes. I was thinking mm -hmm. of. I love New Zealand. I love the landscape. So I was thinking maybe retiring someday in New Zealand, Australia. But I also didn't get in. Mm -hmm. So why Canada now? Uh, Canada, because uh, when uh, I was still young, well, uh, back in college, uh, my family, my aunt, my close aunt and my uncle uh, moved to Canada. Okay. So ever since, they've been telling me, like, once you graduate, uh, target going to Canada so you can bring your mom and dad with us. So that's like got into my mind okay so if i'm going abroad it. yes so if i'm going it. abroad i'm going to canada and from there i get to see like how their life improves okay mm -hmm. like living there so how long has your aunt and uncle been since in? 2005. okay so where in canada are they in vancouver okay that's on the, the other warmer side, side. <laughs> of the world mm -hmm. so why <laughs> why moncton why new brunswick because personally before we were introduced to Moncton, like, what's Moncton? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, we had the so why Moncton and why New Brunswick, Vancouver? Yep. Well, it was 2017 when the, um, the government of New Brunswick started visiting different okay. countries in Asia and were doing information sessions. Okay. It was the time when they were doing information sessions to get people in the IT and, and the finance yeah. field. Okay. We, we, we were just was going this? with the flow. It was 2017. Okay. Yeah. So you attended one of those sessions? We yes. attended two. Two. Right? Two. Two <laughs> sessions. We just keep on the going. The first one is just like, uh, it's just me and her. Okay. The second one, I asked my mom to join me. Okay. Why, why did you ask your mom to join you? Because I, when the first time I went there, I already have a feeling like, I think this is it. I think okay. this is something that uh, will we'll happen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. uh, we've been trying. Like, since 2005, I, I see my family living in Canada. Okay, I graduated, yeah. finished college, and then the, targeting that's how Canada. That's we've been trying wow. since after college. Because of the point system. Didn't you get frustrated? I mean, you were young when you were doing yeah. this. Didn't you get frustrated in... And go keep keeping on applying, and it's not happening. We got frustrated. I got so frustrated, got frustrated because <laughs> it was all me doing the research, everything. Um, then you would try all the provincial nomination programs of all provinces um, to no avail. Wow! Until we got a child, and all of that, we've been keeping and keeping, trying, and trying, and trying, and trying. And trying. Okay. Yep. So, New Brunswick did their info sessions. What happened after that? Like. You went to an info session, and how did it progress from there? Then they said, if you are in the IT field, you submit an expression of interest. interest. Yeah. Then after that, we got the invite. Yeah. After a month. Because a month Ryan after. was yes. in the IT, IT field. I was in oh. the IT field for 11 years. So yeah. what were you doing in the Philippines before you decided to look around? 
uh, back home, I'm an IT in a bank. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. in, it's Planters Development Bank. It's yeah. my where I took my like uh, internship, and, they and got then you. eventually they got me in, and then from there it just like I didn't left. Okay. Then, and May, yeah. what were you doing back home? I was in the university. Okay. Teaching. Teaching. Mm -hmm. Wow. Teach and it was different because they don't need teachers here. Yeah. So even if I was like the main applicant, Canada kept on ignoring me. I think there's also a lesson there that you have to figure out who's a stronger yeah. partner when you're when you're moving. In our case, there was no one stronger. We just <laughs> <laughs> happened to like we both locked had. out. Yeah, because yeah. it also depends on the field that you yes. have, right? So you can go in. Okay, so when you got when you put in the expression of interest, what happened next? After a month, we got the invitation. Wow. It After was that a fast. month, it was that fast. Five and years then, back. and then, what happened? What did you have to do? Like, what did you have to prepare for? Uh, it's more of like me yeah. preparing. Everything. <laughs> so, I'm more of the signing type. <laughs> I just signed the papers. I I, I, I recognize that <laughs> that thing about males. <laughs> They didn't know anything much about the yeah. knee degree, uh, but because he's the main applicant... Just sign here. Yeah. Yeah. Since just I'm sign the here. principal so applicant, <laughs> I have to produce all the documents that okay, she asked okay, me to yeah. do. It's a win-win. Okay. Without him... <laughs> you can go. Right? Yeah. There's no so, principal okay. applicant. But so between... That's why she stuck with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so between the, in, um, between the invitation till we got the permanent resident, it was just nine months. In, wow. Yeah. That was fast. Yes. Really okay. Fast. So, what did you have to be prepared for? I know you have been trying mm -hmm. for a long time, but you know, moving's not easy. Yes. Because you need to produce like income. Yeah. You know, money to funds. travel. Mm -hmm. So, what did you have to do? Because some people that I've interviewed had to get loans, everything. Yeah. So, what on your part were the things you had to prepare for? So in terms of funds, funds, you can it's uh, more on my family. Like I said, since my family is already in Canada, they already know. Oh. Like they're preparing me. They prepared oh. the funds. For like the funds, they're wow. putting like uh, money in to, a to help you under out. my name. So in case I have my application for Canada, we'll just like produce the paper and. This is your it. aunt, right? Yeah, my aunt. Does she need to adopt someone? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm the adopted son. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Aunt. Like three but, of us. But in case you need aunt. <laughs> oh my God! Okay, okay. It was a joint effort between his aunt and and our mom. My mom. Yeah. They prepared yeah. Um, everything. But it's good you have family like that. Yes. Yeah. Imagine if you don't, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, moving from the Philippines to Moncton, New Brunswick. What were your apprehensions? Did you not feel like? Uh, I don't know anyone here, of kind of thing. It was yeah. funny because they, their family care and love for us so much that they even flew us from Vancouver to here. Oh wow! Stayed for a few days just to make sure. I need to meet your aunt. <laughs> <Yeah. I need laughs> just to, to make sure aunt. we got everything we need wow. before. Then they left. So when we left. first landed in Canada, we didn't land here in Moncton. So you landed we in landed Vancouver. Landed in Vancouver. Stayed there for a month and okay. have a, like a vacation. They treated us everything. That's where we process everything, like our SIN numbers, our uh, bank accounts, so everything. Everything was Vancouver yes. made. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because we. In, in the Philippines, we are regular employees. Okay. We, it's Our jobs sound so nice to hear. Oh, those are white collar jobs, but we're not earning much. Yeah. You don't okay. get enough by, by being a teacher. Oh, okay. Um, more so, Working for, uh, the same, yeah, the same thing. We are corporate slaves, like that, so we didn't have as much, you know, money on our own. Savings, we and don't all have property. Because it's Life always really like hard. you earn money. You Use it okay. for yeah. okay. pay for for your your bills. Yeah. Tuition fees. Tuition like fees. That's where it get me. Like and you started. have a child, right? Yes. You have a little girl. How did she go through everything? I mean, was she happy about it? Was she excited? Or she didn't understand what was she happening? Didn't, she probably didn't understand much of a six-year-old. Oh, yes. she was six. But then. we were preparing her since she was a toddler. 
um, in, I, I wasn't babying her. I, I kept on telling her when she was in preschool that you have to go to school on your own, okay. no mommy. Okay. Um, so in that way, she was mentally prepared. Mentally and emotionally prepared. A six-year-old mentally prepared. As yes. prepared as she can be. Okay, yep, so now we're here in Vancouver. Auntie that I need to meet <laughs> brought you here to Moncton. So, okay, what happened when you got here in Moncton? How was looking for, uh, for you know, rental, jobs? How was that process for you? Fortunately, we have uh, friends, like uh, oh. WhatsApp group. Oh, so you develop friends. Yeah, yes. WhatsApp group. It's a DIY WhatsApp group. Everyone's oh. anonymous. Yeah. Oh. It's um, helping one another helping to, my, to immigrate. Okay. And so then everybody was m trying to immigrate to New Brunswick. So you knew, knew yeah, some knew. people. That's already like planning to go here. Okay. So, and then when you got here, They're your friends, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> anonymous, yeah, anonymous friends are here. Yes. We're here already. Yes. Like, uh, like months uh, earlier. Just okay. months earlier. Not here. So what what happened? Did they help you find yes. everything? So they're the ones that help us to get an apartment. Right. So when we landed, we already have an apartment prepared for us, like wow. reserved. So we because don't have to deal like looking around to stay in a motel. Imagine yeah. now. Yeah. I know. Imagine, Imagine now. now. Back then, it's just too easy. Like too a easy. lot of apartments are like open. Open. But now, no. oh my wow. gosh, that's why they're building so many. Yeah. Yep. So coming here okay you have an apartment you have uh you have somewhere to sleep but like transportation uh jobs how did you fare on those first few days um we tried we were just navigating through the city how to get in the bus okay alongside with that is to try to look for jobs we were walking Everywhere. Uh, printing in the downtown, printing in the library, resumes, wow. sending like it to the dollar it, yeah. store, dollar to the store, groceries. super store. Like I sent a couple of copies, and they were wow. ignoring um, our application. Why do you feel they were ignoring your application? Could be a resume is not Canadian format. Canadian <laughs> format, that or maybe because we don't have a Canadian experience. Okay. Local experience, so yeah. But we we're talking about the dollar store here. Yes. Yep. Why do you need Canadian experience I to know. sell at the dollar store? Exactly. Right? So you felt. How long before you actually got a call back for a job? And what kind of job was it? Hmm. My first job was at Pure Later in a contact center. Okay. I just walked in one day. I think they had a hiring event, gave my resume, and then I got the job. But that was like two, three weeks. Three weeks after, three weeks we, after we arrived. Oh, that's it not felt forever. If oh, you well. don't have money. True, um, true. Right? Like everything is just. We felt like oh, we needed money to come in. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you have to eat. Yes. You have a child, you have to pay mm -hmm. rent, everything. We would just have to buy, say, one pack of chicken, one can of milk, that kind of thing. That's that's our mindset. Like, we cannot um, live like this. We we need to save what we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know. I it's, it's It was difficult. And, and if you are going to multiply it, the yeah, like the rate. conversion. Oh if you my try gosh. to convert everything, you won't be buying any. I know. I I told <laughs> my husband we can't we cannot convert yeah, yeah. anymore. Yeah. We will not eat. Yes. We have we to not stop. Eat. Yeah. So how about Ryan? How how yeah. long did it take for you to get for a job? For me, so she got the first uh, after mm. three weeks. She got the job. job. Mm -hmm. so then after that, I waited like a week. Uh, still no call. And my last resort is to ask my friends for to refer me oh, to whatever. Wow. Yeah their looking uh, company is mm. so and luckily yeah someone uh, working at Ken like okay. most of the Filipinos back then uh, a lot of them are working at Ken Warehouse. so it's like uh, Ken keeps on hiring people they don't okay. really need like experience or whatever it's mm. like my last card like yeah. if I can't find any job you go to Ken I go if to you Ken, can't find the job you, you go to Ken yeah. okay. ranging <laughs> ranging yeah. so how did it feel being a teacher in mm. university to work at a call center and how did it feel to work at an IT I in a bank and now working at Kent? Yeah. How was it for you? We just would always think positive um, even if it was hard um, because I only work at the contact center for three weeks and then I went working in a daycare which is more it, it's a physical job um, but I think a month after that, you start to feel 
a little um, pity. You, you have self-pity. Yeah. I know at that time, that's the period when we, I was starting to feel very down and not questioning myself, but in my head, I need to, I need to this job to have food on the table. To survive. To survive, because I was cleaning washrooms. I was oh wiping kids' bums. I was, there's nothing wrong with that kind of job, but it's just so hard. So and hard. it wasn't what you trained for, I, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, was there? How about you, Brian? Then I go to Ooh. my question. Yeah. How was it? For, so for me, it's uh, very humbling. It's mm. not. Uh, I'm not so used to like. I'm so used like sitting down and just like typing away, computer stuff. When I work at Ken, it's more on hard manual, manual labor, labor, like moving stuff from pallets to pallets, like building products or whatever. How many pounds did you lose? Uh, yeah, I lose a lot of weight. 30 like, pounds. Yeah, like Maybe I should have. <laughs> so, on he my interview, it. that's what I actually said to the uh, manager, like, oh, why do you work, oh, the, why do you want to work at Kent? So I said, like, I, uh, you don't have any physical related activities or past jobs related to warehouse, so why do you want to work with us? So I told them, like, I know it's something new for me. I'm thinking of it as a, like, a free membership in a gym. <laughs> but instead of me paying for the membership, you, you guys pay paid. me. That's and, one way to look at and it. And then he was surprised, like he liked my answer. It so, hurt. but did you ever feel like, uh, you know, what am I doing? Uh, I felt that after, because I've stayed there for three and a half years. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I really like the job, actually. <laughs> oh, it's very so it's humbling. a different thing for you. Yeah. Okay. It's, for me, it's a different experience. I enjoyed it, actually. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So when I went there, I get to meet a lot of people. I tried to learn English language more fluently. Because <laughs> yeah. I know I was, that's what on my things, uh, moving here, I'm afraid to, like, I might not get into a job because of my English. You know, that's one thing. Okay, know. people. Don't don't ever think that your English is good or bad. Yeah. It, it's always everybody speaks English a different way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's it's always okay. So I'm telling everyone. Okay. Yep. So Deborah, that's one so, of my goals. So what did you feel? But still, it's so different from your job. So like, did you ever feel like, why did I do this? What am I doing mm -hmm. here? Uh, like I said, uh, I felt that way on my third year. Like oh, on your third year. On my third year, I said, when I keep on doing same things oh, for three years, I said, is this something that I'm going to do until I retire? Oh my yeah. God! I don't think this is something I want to do for a long time. Because yeah. my target when I got in is I I'll be staying here for six months. So I, after working there, uh, I'm trying to I'm when I'm still working mm -hmm. there, I'm trying to submit my papers to different companies, but. Unfortunately, still no, yeah, no. even with an even IT with background, the, yes. with three and a half years, we oh my goodness. we were I looking tried, nonstop yeah. for him for an well, IT it's, job. It's really I don't know. Sometimes the reasons why we don't get mm -hmm. called in. So that's another story altogether. Yeah. But me, you wiping butts, yeah, cleaning bathrooms. I know that my daughter did that. Mm -hmm. So how did it feel? Like did it ever feel like what did I do? I'll just go home. Back my bags. Yeah. Well, regret was never an option. We were always grateful. Okay. Regardless if we are crying. Um, I, I was literally crying because there was one time when I was working in the daycare and my child was in the other room. Mm -hmm. She got into an accident, got, you know, oh, um, wow. hit her mouth and was bleeding. But I can't go and attend my daughter because I am working. So it was very difficult uh, even psychologically and mentally for me um, no regrets but in your mind I was thinking that um, not I'm losing my, not that I'm losing my mind no I feel like I need to keep on studying and studying I'm losing that part of me the learning growth. the learning. growth yeah. I stopped learning because you're doing I think you felt that way too yeah. like so yeah. what stagnant. did you have to do Stagnant. So because you have different jobs now, right? Yes. From yeah. those jobs. Mm -hmm. So what did you have to do to get the new jobs that you have? And how are you feeling about these jobs now? So I, ha I was able to find the, my next job a year and a half after working in a daycare. But the daycare was my gateway to get into the job. Okay. Um, and I used that as a leverage to answer 
uh, during the interview, and then I got into the settlement agency for, for newcomers. Um, then from there, I was able to use my transferable skills. Only then when I felt like, finally, I'm back. I'm growing again. Yeah, I'm, growing I'm back again. to my old self. So how did it feel to be at least employed where you want to be employed? You felt at first that you're still a corporate slave. You felt like you're, you still need to prove yourself because okay. that's our culture. Yeah. But then you have to slow down because not here. Okay. Not, okay. not here. So the adjustment of looking for always something to do, mm -hmm. that was the challenge because I shouldn't. I so just, just to slow down? To slow down. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's talking to me. Brian, you. So now you have a different job. Yeah. How does it feel now that you're in the job where you feel you want? Felt good. I mean, uh, I'm thinking like this is a job that I'll be retiring to. Okay. Like this is finally, so finally, like, finally, I found something that I can, I think I can like stay. Is it an IT I job? Uh, it's not more, on, it's a, still a bank. It's okay. A bank. So it's a bank, uh, not pure IT, but you need like IT experience to do the job. And you're comfortable being yes. in a corporate environment yes. again. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's something that I've been doing We're like ever both since. So socially, room. how are you adjusting now to being in Moncton? I know you had friends then, mm -hmm. but like, how does it feel now for you? Do you feel like you belong in Moncton? Definitely. Oh. Instantly, we felt. Despite the hardships, we know we're, we're home. Okay. So was there ever a time you felt you were, you know, discriminated upon? No. Was there ever a time you felt like, oh... Mm. Uh, in Moncton, you know. no. Maybe in other parts of province, like other provinces, I felt. Yeah. But in Moncton, nothing. Never. Like, never. No. Yeah. I really enjoyed, like, the people here are always smiling. They always greet you. They're yep. so, like... Okay. How about you, May? Well... I, I don't know if it's... Of yeah, course, it's different yeah. experiences. When I was in the daycare, I felt that, like, you go into a room and the staff would start speaking in French. And at first, they were all speaking in English. You had those. Um, you would have um, I, a random guy I met in downtown just ask me what my visa was. What? There, when we yeah. were newcomers, you get so those. So there's still those. Yeah, yeah. I, I got those. Luckily, I don't get to experience those because I'm a little bit hot-headed when it comes to like <laughs> those kind of things. So it's a good thing. I will react differently. Okay. What funny? What, what, the funny <laughs> thing is that I answered him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but because you feel like you have to, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like at least there's to. really less of those yeah. than more. Mm -hmm. So I, we're winding down, but just wanted to ask you, if you could do things over again, would you still go through what you went through to be yes, here? Yes, definitely. Yeah. We'll still go through the process, everything. This is something that we aspired of. Maybe that's our difference um, with um, other immigrants, uh, is that we are grateful for everything. Hardship, the small wins, we celebrate we celebrated and including our child she understands how difficult it is mm -hmm. um and an everyday um basis and even our ba our life back in the philippines she understands that it's very different so what advice would you give to people who are like you have been searching have been wanting but you know somehow things don't line up yeah what advice will you give to them you want to start uh, for me, like if you're planning to move to Canada, have a, like the mindset mm -hmm. of moving here. Like, uh, don't think that you'll be getting the job that you really want, or ha things will happen as you plan when mm -hmm. you're still at home. Things will like God has a different plans for us. Mm -hmm. Like I believe so. Mm -hmm. So I just go with the flow. What whatever is presented in me that's where yep. i'm going to so you're flexible with. yes so be yep. flexible be flexible and prepare to be uh, lower your expectations yep. that's yeah. it lower mm -hmm. expectations realistic yes. yeah really realistic how about you may what well, advice would you give well i want to break the notion that when people see um an immigrant with a good life the, that's the only thing that gets stuck in their head. That if you see. are an aspirant immigrant, you only think of the good stuff. Mm. So I want to break that notion because that I think is what people regret when they come here mm -hmm. is that lack of um, unrealistic expectations. I think Im uh, immigration is an 
it's not one size fits all true, true, thing, right? True. And so you have to know yourself before deciding if you want to. If you want. Because it's not an easy process. Yeah, and we've been hearing some a lot of heartbreaking stories of people risking everything from their home countries, selling everything, and then when they come here, they regret and only to move back. So perseverance is key as well. Yes. And you have to decide if that's what you want. If really yes. that's what you want. Well, with that, thank you, thank May you and so Brian, much. for being thank here you. with me. I appreciate you being here. So next week, we'll have a new guest, and this is The Moving Truth with Pam. Bye, Pam. <laughs>